Okay, students, this is a brief video I'm putting together to help you learn how to leverage Google and G Suite to basically hack your study time and make it as efficient as possible. So starting the semester, you have full access to this uh, through SDSU, and you probably have already started to use Gmail to access your SDSU email, so that's why I'm starting here on Gmail. Now, uh, one thing you'll notice is that by default, Gmail tries to be intelligent about your email and it sorts it into these things. So you have to sort of just make sure that you're knowing which, uh, you know, where your emails might be headed. For, for me, for example, a lot of my class email gets sent to forums. So you can see here there's some email about my Ant 349 class. So you'll want to make sure that you're, you're not just checking your primary uh, inbox, you're clicking on some of these headings right over here. Now, there's all kinds of things you can do in Gmail from turning it dark like I have it here to changing the layout so that you can you know, more easily read it. All those are accessible up through the settings over here. There's quick settings and then there is more default settings. Uh, so for example, if you want to hit all the settings, you just click see all the settings and it'll take you to all of these different things and you can set up away messages, you can put a professional signature at the bottom of all your outgoing emails, and these are things you might want to explore as a, as a way to professionalize the use of your institutional email. A, a courteous salutation at the end of all your messages will make all the people that you sent emails to much more happy and willing to help you. That's hack number one. Okay, so let's go back to uh, our email over here. You'll notice over here that I have set up some tags. And what's really cool is that uh, it's really simple to set up a tag so that Gmail will filter your email. So if you have a class like Ant349 that I'm teaching this, this year, uh, what you can do is to find an email that has like something in the title or comes from the professor or something like that. Uh, select it. And then up here at the top, what you can see is labels. And then if you have labels, you can apply them. But you can put create new. And uh, you can just type it, you know, whatever you want. Uh, test label here and hit create, right? So that's simple for that email. But you can also uh, go over here and put filter messages like these, and it gives you some rules. So in this case, it has the person who sent it, uh, but you can add the subject line. So I can put anth349, and I could put words in it, uh, sizes, has attachments. Uh, etc. And uh, then you can hit create filter and then it says what do you want to do with it? Well you can archive it, you can mark it as red, you can throw it in the trash if you don't want to see any of that stuff. But probably the most useful thing is to uh, either categorize it by putting it into one of the tabs that already exists, social updates forum, or uh, apply a label to it. And so we just created our test label. And once we do that, any email that comes to me that has Ant349 in the title is going to be labeled test. And then my labels show up over here on the left. So here's test over here. I can click that. And now you can see that this particular email shows up under this label. So eventually, uh, you're going to get a lot of emails. And this is a way to just be really efficient about automatically organizing your emails so that you don't miss important communication. Study tip number two is be organized in your email communications. That's the way your professors are going to get in touch with you. You need to make sure you're, you're hacking that. OK, so Gmail is not the only thing in G Suite. You have access to Google Drive, Docs, Sheets, Forms, uh, Slides, etc. A really cool thing that you can do up here is that from within your email, you got this little uh, grid of dots. You got access to all of them here. So you're in Gmail, you want to go to Drive, you just do that and it opens up your Google Drive over here. So Google Drive is essentially a cloud storage space. You can make folders, you can all create documents, you can upload images, you can upload all kinds of different format documents. And you, from within Google Drive, you can create new documents as well. You'll see here that I've made a folder for each of my classes. I highly recommend that you do that. Now, I'm the professor. I have a lot of teaching material in here. You're going to put your assignments, any things that the professor has shared to you, collaborations that you're doing with students, study notes, that kind of stuff. You're going to keep them organized by class via folder. So here's the folder I have for our class. And you can see here that I have a bunch of the material, including the syllabus and stuff. You can definitely uh, create copies of this stuff. You can access them from any device, including your phone, which is great. 
So let's just go into this little folder for resources. You've read this how to read academic literature and uh, you read it embedded in Canvas, but I created it here as a Google Doc and uh, I did it in a certain way that helps it stay organized. Uh, and essentially what I did is I used uh, styles, paragraph styles to organize it and so it actually has a table of contents. And so you can use that to skip around in this particular document. And the way you do that is through this little box right here, which is styles. So let's say I'm in this paragraph. Uh, look at this, I'm fighting a typo right now. Uh, I'm in this document right here, and I want to change it to be uh, something other than normal text. I can just literally click, and now it's a heading. And it actually shows up over here as a heading. Now, I don't really want that, so I can take it back and put it back to normal text. Um, you'll notice here that this normal text has different spacing than this is because I didn't set the default for normal text. One thing that you can do is if once you get the paragraph styled the way you like it with nice spacing, you go over here and you see it's applied normal text and you say update normal text to match and all of a sudden anything else that's normal text is basically formatted to match. So now when you're writing your papers, all the styles are going to match throughout them. If you make sure that you use headings, heading one, heading two for lower headings, then you get this really beautiful nested outline over here that lets you navigate through the document and can create essentially a table of contents for you without you having to do anything. All you have to do is to remember, instead of just making this bold, go over here, set it to heading two, update the styles, and then heading two styles to match. So that's a real quick hack with uh, Google Docs. Another real quick hack that you can do is to collaborate with people. And if you go up to File, the first thing is Share. And by default, your documents are just for you. But what you can do is put people's emails in here, and it will pull out you know, the different people that you want to collaborate. And you can either make them just uh, view it. So let me just pick one of my grad students. Here I can make her editor. So she can go in and actually edit the document. We can write on it together. And in fact, when she's editing it, I can see her typing in real time, which is really, really cool. I can just make her uh, give me comments. I can just make her a lot, let her see it if I don't want her to make any changes. And by clicking notify, it's going to send her an email. And I can write something like, hi, Kat. Here's a doc to edit, please. Right? And I can send her an email. Uh, make her an editor and just hit send and it'll give her access. You can also make these like publishable to the web but you probably won't need most of that stuff. You'll want to collaborate with just like one of your classmates, right? But if say you did, you can uh, update the permissions through this. So I'm not going to do this because a cat doesn't need access. I can get a link from here and just send it to the people that I wanted to. Uh, Again, I'm not updating the sharing settings uh, at all. Right now, it's open to just people at SDSU, so you can see it through Canvas. Um, so that's another hack for Google. Now, if I am uh, collaborating on this, up here I have a little tool that says editing mode. Anything I write is just going to go in there like normal text. And uh, you know, Google Drive will save versions of this, so you can roll back if you wanted to. Uh, you can look at the version history over here and see all the changes that happen. Probably a more convenient way if you're collaborating is to switch to suggesting. And here, everything that I type is going to be not automatically applied. It's going to show up in green and say, hey, Isaac Ula decided to suggest this. And later on, I can hit the check mark and I can approve the changes and it will appear there. And I can hit, I'm uh, undoing this. Uh, you can go either to edit undo or you can use what I do which is control Z to undo that text. You can also add comments. You can highlight a little section of text and you see this little button pops up, add a comment. And you can write, you're collaborating with your classmate, I don't get this part. Can you elaborate please? And then you can hit a comment like that and it can show up and your, tech, uh, your collaborator can go in there and go, Oh yeah, I made a mistake, right? <laughs> Let me fix it. Uh, and you can just have a little conversation. This will pop up into your Gmail too. You'll get a little notification that they made a comment and you can go back and check and see what they did. 
So this is super efficient for collaborating on homework, for even doing like study guides collaboratively together as well. Share the docs with your classmates and then you can all get in there and edit. And then you can go in there, you can say the comments resolved and it can go away like that. So there are a couple other sort of more in-depth for hacks that you might learn through a variety of ways, but these are the main things for you to get to use Google Docs efficiently. So back to Drive. Want to make a new doc? It's pretty straightforward. You either right click and you can make a new Google Doc right over here, or you can make a new Google Sheet or a new Google Slides. All of these things are uh, super useful tools. All my presentations are in slides. Slides are a wonderful way for you to create presentations for your classes. You've got all these really great templates. I like, I'm sort of, uh, uh, you know, drawn to the darker template here. And then you can just add your titles and do all this kind of stuff. Create your slides and your content, paste in your, your graphics, and you have all kinds of control over how they show. Now, these are all super details that you can get to know, but slides are super easy nice right and you can do the same thing you can share them and collaborate in exactly the same way you can do with the google docs and you can also create spreadsheets which are google sheets there are forms there are all kinds of stuff and you may use these you may never use them but you can collaborate in exactly the same way i showed you with docs with all of these other tools now there's one other little sort of efficiency tool that i really take advantage of which is google keep notes and uh, what's really cool is you have the sidebar in Gmail and you can add uh, different add-ons, basically different uh, G Suite tools to them. So I have my calendar over here sometimes, uh, which can pop up and show me my daily schedule. I'm gonna talk about the calendar in just a minute. But one of the things I really like is Google Keep. And this is just a way to just keep some notes. So if you find yourself quickly taking notes and you want them easily accessible, Google Keep is the tool for that. You can just take a note, give it a title, and hit done and it's organized in a nice uh, uh, fashion so if you go to the overall Google Keep um, site you can just see all your notes are just here you can title them to do list prepare these things some are advising all kinds of stuff and they're real simple you can edit them you can take pictures and they can just stay up here and they sync across all your devices including your phone if you have access to it here I really like this little window over here because I can put like auto responses things that I type a lot in my email and I can just very quickly uh, copy and paste it over into a response into my email now let's talk about uh, Google Calendar this is your probably maybe if I had to rank your hacks for productivity this could be it uh, Google Calendar can keep you organized put all your classes on here put any meetings you have on here uh, put any deadlines you have here for assignments and it can keep synced across all your devices It can give you little updates. It's really simple if you've never used it click on a time slot add a title um, and if you need to uh, give it more options you can totally do that you want to change the color you can do it here I have a whole bunch of different kinds of labels that I've applied I can set up notifications that send to me by email. I can make it a Zoom meeting directly from within uh, Gmail, and then I can add a guest. Uh, you know, I can send it to one of my collaborators, and when I hit save, it's going to send that person an email invite to add it to their Google Calendar too. And now you're being super efficient and super organized uh, because you have your schedule right here, and you have you can do weekly. You can look at what your day looks like just today and see all the things that are coming up. Uh, you can look at the month outlook and see all the due dates that are coming up. And in fact, you can look at your entire year and see all the, the dates and stuff that are coming up. So uh, Google uh, Calendar is my probably number one efficiency hack. Just get to know the calendar, uh, get to know how to use it, how to set up events, how to how to make them auto repeat. So, for example, for uh, for one of my classes, um, I'll just go in here and edit it. You can see that over here, I've set the repeats. Uh, I've got it to custom repeat every one week on Thursday from you know the time frame that I set up over here, 11 to 12, and ending on December 11th, the last day of semester. When I hit done. It will populate my entire calendar. I can hit save. 
and then boom it's up there and as I go forward I have the same event every Thursday so it's a really really useful way to keep you on track keep you organized keep you figuring out when your due dates are uh, and keep you from falling behind okay and then a final hack is that you may be used to the Google search and let's say you're doing a research uh, project and you want to find a, uh, an article on um, Gobekli Tepe, right? So there we have Gobekli Tepe. And we get Wikipedia and we get some popular websites and this is great. You can learn some information about Gobekli Tepe. But let's say you really quickly wanted to find scholarly articles because the professor said you need scholarly articles. You could go to the library website, which I'm going to show you next time, and you can go through the catalogs and you can search there for sure. But a really quick way is just to simply go to Google Scholar, scholar.google.com. And it looks like a regular Google search. Uh, you can put Gobekli Tepe in there. But instead of just regular websites, all of these are academic papers. And not only that, it tells you if a PDF is available for download. And it gives you bibliographic information right away. So if you, uh, we're going to get into this when we do how to do citations and stuff, but if you want the bibliographic information, you can literally grab it right here, put it into whatever format you want and save it. But you can also just click on the PDF if there's a PDF available, and you can be reading the article in no time. Now we're going to talk about how to hack this even more when we talk about next time how to use the library. But yeah, Google Scholar is the final uh, study tip that I have for you right now. So hopefully this video is not running too long. You can see um, a variety of really cool hacks uh, in, in G Suite with docs and slides and all kinds of stuff, right? So hopefully you'll take advantage of your new access to this, uh, unlimited storage and all these tools and stuff like that. And we can certainly discuss this more in our uh, next town hall meeting next week for sure.